Welcome, everyone. This is uh, the talk Practical Polish, the secrets for how to juice your game uh, mechanics in UEFN. Uh, my name is Jay Villanueva. I'm a product design lead on uh, UEFN. Uh, I've been making games for 20 years, both uh, large and small. Um, and the thing about making games is that um, we thrive on feedback, right? So this talk was inspired by the community because I've played a lot of your games and I want to give you guys some feedback about how to juice some of your mechanics. Um, so I've been making it for 20 years. Uh, my job is that I ensure that UEFN has a capacity to make games. I take all that feedback and I make sure that you have the tools you need in order to succeed. So with that, I want to ask a question of some of you. How does this game make you feel? It's called Invasion of the Fort Vaders. The rules are simple. You have Fort Vaders that are attacking, and you have to shoot them down. How does this make you feel? Take a nap. Take a nap? <laughs> Slow? Fort Vaders, yeah. It's pretty basic, right? Um, it's lonely. Oh, that's a good one. I like lonely. Um, yeah, so before you go and finalize your game and polish it, um, you might want to take a look at your mechanics and juice them. So this talk isn't about like final polish, ship your game. This talk is about when you are building your game and you've got some mechanics that you have and they don't feel right, something's missing. You can do some things in order to make sure that your mechanics are actually feeling good. So this talk, is about juicing your game, right? Practical tips on how to do that. So let's, what is juicing, right? I keep saying it over and over, juicing. Juicing is about applying emotional design to your existing mechanics, right? Juicing is about bountiful player feedback. It's about reinforcing what the player's doing, making sure that the, that the player understands that they're doing the right thing. It's about making things that feel good. Juicing is about things that are, that bounce, pop, uh, ding, whistle, sizzle right, in response to something the player did. Um, I'm gonna go over some of the tools, but these are not the only answers. Um, what I want you to take away is that look at your mechanics and apply this lens of emotional design to it. And just like prototyping, this is supposed to be fun. All right, where do we begin? Animation. Animation is movement, right, it's life. Let's start there. These Fort Vaders are moving using Teleport 2. And I've seen a lot of community games using Teleport and Move 2, and this leads to movement that's stuttery, right, or otherwise very stiff. But we have a better way. In Verse, um, we have the Animation Controller. The Animation Controller is an API for Fortnite props for animating things using Verse. The advantage over Sequencer um, is that you can describe and apply the animations programmatically. You don't have to des describe them in Sequencer on a timeline and tie them to it. So the way it works is you set up keyframes in verse. You specify how long between those keyframes you want to happen. You specify how that change should occur, right? And then you just play it. So there's no need for teleporting or move to. And then when you play, it interpolates. So I just said a lot of things. What does that all mean? So let's break it down. Animating is about setting up keyframes. So anyone's ever done that? In this case, I've got a keyframe A and a keyframe B, right? And then you ask the computer, I just say, I have a position A and a position B, and I want you to move this object for me. And you get animation, right? The computer does the work for you. So this is called in-betweening in the animation uh, um, expertise, or tweening for short. You don't have to animate every frame. This is not a cartoon, right? So you specify properties such as location, and you just tell the computer to do the work. That's what the, that's what the um, Verse API will let you to do, the animation controller. So what do you give the animation controller? So I'm gonna describe what we do before we get into any code. You're gonna specify a change that you want, right? How much to move it, how much to rotate it, and how much to scale it, right? That's the change. How do you want that change to occur, right? How much time should that change take? what interpolation type you're gonna use. I'll get into that in a second. And what do you wanna to apply it to? And in this case, it's a creative prop. So let's start with change. 
So I'm going to show you some verse code now, and I'm going to quickly go through it. And don't worry about writing down. I have a link at the end to a QR code to a forum post with all some of this information. So you can just uh, look at it later. All right, here's some keyframe data for the animation controller. It's from, uh, it's, a, it's called a keyframe delta. And this is the change, how much you want to move it. Delta location. If you look at that vector, I just want to move it 100 centimeters in the X. That's all I'm asking it to do right now. How much to rotate it? Delta rotation. And that's identity rotation. Identity rotation is a function just returns no rotation. I don't want to rotate it. How much scale? Well, the scale is set to 1. I don't want to change the scale. So note that I call these delta, right? Delta is a symbol in math, right? Um, it represents change. So this isn't an absolute position. This is actually a change. So wherever you are, 100 centimeters in the X. All right, that was change. How do you want to apply that change? And that's the remainder of this code. How much time? I want you to make that change of 100 centimeters in the X in 1.5 seconds, right? Interpolation type, I'll explain that in a moment. I'm just going to set it to linear. Right, and what? Well, the creative prop, the creative prop you want to apply it to. So the creative prop, how do you play it? The important part really is here is that every, you're going to get the Fortnite Vader prop, whichever prop you're specifying in your verse code, you're going to get the animation controller. You're going to create an array of your keyframes, right? So this could be, right here it's one. You could have any number of keyframes you want. You get 12, 20, whatever you like, right? And then you set the animation and you play it. So you specify the keyframe, you, make, uh, you take four lines to grab the animation controller and just play it. So I talked about interpolation type. What is that? Interpolation affects how you get from keyframe to keyframe. It makes a subtle difference. So in these examples, notice that the ball's actually getting to, from A to B in the same amount of time. Right? Linear at the top means no change in acceleration. Just go from there at a constant speed. Ease in is it slows down, it decelerates. It starts fast and it slows down. Ease out at the bottom accelerates. It builds up speed as it gets there. And if I go over here to the video, you'll be able to, I can drag and slow it down to show you that, to prove it. Linear is at the top. Ease in goes faster. It accelerates and it slows down. While ease out is behind, but at the end, they actually arrive at the same time. So you always have to experiment and find what works with you. Go play with these interpolation types, and you'll get a feel for what works uh, in any given situation. Okay, so we talked about all that code. What does it look like? This is what a linear interpolation looks like now. Right? Not using teleport. Now they're actually moving. Again, so why am I doing this in verse? Because I can apply it to each of these props programmatically. I don't need to use the sequencer to do it. Right? To start. But let's talk about now rotation, squeezing, stretching. Right? I mentioned earlier that we have rotation scale, and that's what it is. With rotation, you could turn it, and with squeezing and stretching, you use scaling. Right? This ball, a little more lively than the other one. It's the same exact animation. I just added a little rotation and scaling. So let's apply some of that. So that's what this, this is what this looks like in verse. There's a lot of code. I'm not really going to go through it. What's important are these areas right here. In the delta rotation at the top, what I'm actually doing at this point is saying, I want you to turn negative 30 degrees about the Y, right? So that, that'll actually like, turn like this. And then on scale, in the Z, the up and down, I say two thirds, right? So it'll squish down. And in my second keyframe, I actually undo that rotation. I turn it back. Because remember, these are not absolutes, these are changes. So I'll go 30 and then 30 back. And if 1.5, if you do the math, that'll return it to its original scale. It'll go down, and it'll go up. Okay, 
So I just set up five keyframes in my code. I squish the Fort Vader down, I rotate it, and then I, I wait for a moment to build up anticipation, and I slide it over, and I unsquish it. And that's what this looks like here. Same exact movement, same exact distance, and I add a little flare at the end. At the very end, I say, hey, you guys, turn around, but just spin. That's just a different set of keyframes that I specified in the verse. That's fun. All right, so we got some animation done in the animation controller. Let's talk about bountiful feedback. Earlier I said that juicing is about bountiful feedback, player feedback. It's a response to what the player did. It also lets the player know that they're doing the right thing. You should reward the player for doing the right thing. That way they know that they understand the rules of your game. The other effect is it's just more fun. So props have a built-in effect. Um, when, you, when a prop's hit points are depleted, um, they break with this sort of like little particle effect, which is really nice. It comes built in to Fortnite. You know, it even inherits the material, so you see the little blue shards coming off of it. But we can do a little bit more. This little bit of code, what I'm actually doing here, all I'm seeing is I'm sending up one keyframe. This says, I want you to choose an area around you, right? I want to specify a random rotation, and I don't want to change the scale, so I'm choosing a place for this thing to come out of the sky and fall. That's what I want it to do. So it's going to fall forward or backward and rotate randomly. So a little bit of code, a little bit of setup, but this is, what, this is the same technique, and this is what it looks like. This is much better. I even kind of like the little like graveyard of Fort Vader's you end up with. Particle effects, right? Let's keep going. Everybody loves particle effects. Don't make your video card cry, but more is generally better. Um, if you ever want to experiment with code and learn some coding on the side, I recommend writing a particle effect system. It's probably the most, most satisfying code you can ever write. But luckily, you don't have to. Niagara is here. So I am not an effects artist, right? However, I want to show you how quickly you can build something in Niagara. I see um, a lot of games that just lack particle effects. I think it might be because some people might be intimidated by this tool. So if I want to create a particle effect um, for, for when the invaders crash, I want to create one out of this geometry. I made this geometry using the modeling tools. So I'm going to create a new system from the selected emitters. And what you see, there's a lot of templates, parent emitters, and learning examples in here if you've never experimented before. I recommend you go in and try them out. So I'm just going to create an upward mesh burst, right? which is just going to be a particle effect that spawns um, a mesh. So my workflow is I like to set it to infinite and then put a loop duration and then go ahead and populate it using a VFX spawner in my scene because um, once you have it in context of your environment, it's a lot easier to see. This is how I like to work. Um, so once you set your, uh, I set that, the, the static mesh that I created and I went ahead and cleared the material. All right, and once that's set, then I just get to work. I go ahead and speed it up here and I just go through something, and I just go through each of the nodes, kind of playing with each of the values, changing the spread, changing the initial velocities. If you just go through the nodes one by one, you'll see that it's actually just describing different attributes of the particle. Play around, have fun. This is also supposed to be a lot of fun. Add some collision, and if you're at Brad's talk, you'll see if a number doesn't work for you, double it. 70, not enough. 150, not enough. 300. 300 is much better. I like that. After that, in a few minutes, I get a nice little particle effect. All right, let's add that in. What does that look like now? It's got a nice explosion effect with all of those little particles. Feels a little, feels a little crunchier, right? I even go ahead and use the animation controller to scale out 
the Fort Vader so it's not so distracting. Why? It's just a choice. Okay, but what else? What else could we do to, to juice this? Camera shake. Camera shake, my old friend. It is a very, very powerful tool. Please don't abuse it. It'll make your players very angry, but it's a, like, it's like a fine spice. If you apply it correctly, it's super effective. So um, this is gonna also, uh, at the end, I'll have a link to the instructions for how to do this, so just follow along, and you can go to the forum post later to reproduce this. So the first thing you wanna do is create a, a blueprint from the camera shake source actor. Right. This is going to be the blueprint that's actually the camera shake itself. I'm gonna go ahead and name it blueprint BP camera shake. Then I'm gonna create another blueprint from camera shake base. I'm gonna name this BP camera shake pattern. Open up the pattern and set the noise type to Perlin. Then open up the location, the X, Y, and Z, and just set them all to three. This is just a good starting point. This is a nice, strong shake, so you can actually start tuning. If it's too subtle, you won't know if it's working or not. And go ahead and explore all of these other parameters. There's a bunch of tool tips, and like with particles, go play around. Have fun with it. Compile and save it, and then open your BP camera shake. Set the inner and outer attenuation to something big to make sure it's affecting the player, because you can actually set the radius for this. And then set your BP camera shake pattern data. Compile it, save it. Then drag the camera shake, the first blueprint you made, into the scene. And create a level sequence. You'll need a level sequence to trigger it right now. Drag that blueprint in, and you can hit the little plus and add a camera shake component. And then you can hit the plus on that and add a controlled camera shake. And after that, you can actually preview it in the editor, just like the sequence, you can see it there. And I connect it to a button, and we have our camera shake. So you can hook this up to whatever event you want. So let's hook it up to our crash. After the animation controller plays, there we go. That feels a lot better than it just disappearing. All right, what's next? Sound. Sound is often ignored. I'm actually surprised how many times we as all designers ignore sound. I'm seeing heads nodding up and down. It is critical. It is as critical as your mechanics, your effects, your graphics, your, your models, your animations. Um, sound goes with everything. Where do you get sound? Um, there's a lot of low lift ways to get sound in your game. It doesn't have to be perfect. You can uh, go license sounds, you can go find sounds, you can um, you know, get a sound designer, you could do your own Foley yourself. Um, I, in preparation for this talk, just opened up my web browser and started just searching to get some ideas. And I decided on using my microphone connected to my PC, right? All of you have a, a computer in your pocket that has got microphones, you can use that too. Um, and then what? So I took the sounds and I just took in my favorite audio editor and I started adding reverb, echo. I pitched it up, I pitched it down, I changed the rate, I sped it up, I slowed it down, I stretched it. Have fun, just like everything else. Have fun, discover, you're gonna find weird things that are gonna work. So this is what it sounds like now. I went and got some sounds, or made some sounds. See how much this adds? I made all these sounds myself. Some of these sounds are from me, but I would like to introduce you to my actual Fort Vader sound effect generator, my buddy Rocket. Uh, as my corgi, he, uh, he barks, he also grunts. I just re recorded his grunts and added them to my game. 
Um, he gets paid in kibble and uh, chewies, so. <laughs> Sound can come from anywhere. He added to the game and it adds joy, it adds crunches, adds juice. Context. So what's the story to your game? Add life to your world. This isn't about final art polish or anything, but sometimes context for your mechanics helps a great deal. So what do I mean? Well, your game is a story. It tells a story, right? All of your objects need an intention. Ask, what is the goal of this thing? Where should it live? What should it look like, right? What is the need of this thing? Well, I wanted these things to be these sort of 8-bit, you know, looking Fort Vader's that are attacking and you need to defend your island. Well, what is that island? So I decided I just want to grab something and I actually found something in our verse starter template and I just used that and tweaked it a little bit. Uh, and this could be very low lift, but just changing it, oops, changing your environment can make it look like this. This feels different already, doesn't it? It feels better. There's a bit of a story here. It's in the future or it's in a computer, right? The point here is you can add anything to give context. I didn't change the mechanic at all. All right, we're almost there. Music. Just like sound, find music that sets the tone, right? Find music that complements your audio. Silence is, is deafening. Find a composer, license music, do what you need to do, but too many games are quiet. And before I show, go move on to show the final version of this, I want you to consider other things. So art. This is not the same as polished art. Low lift, very simple art. Add art to try to tweak your feel of your game. Lighting is another option. If you understand lighting, if not, go play with it. Add lighting. Um, Post-process effects. That's something you can do in UEFN as well. Go explore those things. Add post-process effects that change the feel of those mechanics or integrate them with your mechanics. Um, your environment. Change your environment, add things to your environment. Add particle effects. When you build things around your mechanic and maybe even have your mechanics interact with your environment, it changes that feel, that juiciness. Storytelling. Storytelling, in this case, doesn't necessarily mean your cutscenes, right, or text or anything like that. What is your scene telling the player? That'll make the player feel something when you attach it to your mechanics. Flipping the script. If you find yourself that your mechanic isn't, isn't, doesn't feel good, isn't juicy, flip the script on it. Maybe instead of actually um, you defending, right, maybe you're the attacker. Maybe that city's their city and you're attacking. So now you have to move forward after each wave instead of them coming to you. All of a sudden the game changes. If you just flip the script real quick on something and try it out, you may find that, hey, this works way better. I like this. So as a summary, what we've done is we've gone over tweening, animation, right? We've gone over giving your player bountiful feedback, right? Particles, right? To respond to the things the player's done. Sound. Please do sound. <laughs> Context, right? Add things to your world, add little bits to see if that makes it feel better. So this is what we started with. I didn't change any of the mechanics. All I did was take these tools, these tips, and using these tools, and then applied them to the nth degree just to get this. We didn't change the mechanics. We just juiced the existing ones. Okay, thank you for coming.